My name is Mark Vins. For over five years, 500 videos, You're right, man. and over a million miles traveled around the globe, I have been here with you on Brave Wilderness. And through those thousands upon thousands of hours off trail with my two best friends, I have witnessed some of the most amazing spectacles imaginable. Oh, wow. I have stood amongst the shadows of mountains, of forests, of a cowboy hat, of some of the world's deadliest creatures, and most often, the shadow of my own camera. Then last year, I decided to step out and take my place in front of the lens to pursue my lifelong dream of ocean exploration. And since that day, there has been a singular entity, an enigma that has drawn me back to the blue wilderness. But before I was to meet this creature of epic lore and mystery, I had to first pass a series of tests to prepare myself. There were tiger sharks, hammerheads, and deep water dives, and not simply for any certification, but to prove to myself, to know that I was ready. Ready to meet my fate beneath the waves. Ready to come face to face with the great white shark. There it is. That's our ship. Today is the day we are here in Mexico about to go on our first ever great white shark adventure. Actually, I take that back. This is our second attempt. The first attempt didn't go as planned in the Farallon Islands, but I've got a feeling this one's gonna be a whole lot different. Upon leaving shore, I could feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Would this be a gateway to the next phase of my adventures? Or would this be my last? I am no stranger to risk. I have come face to face and hand to claw with some of the most ferocious and notorious animals on the planet. But this one was so much more. Inevitable, intentional, imperative to my quest as an explorer. Welcome to Guadalupe, a remote volcanic island 175 nautical miles off the coast of Mexico's Baja Peninsula. This towering mountainous expanse of prehistoric Earth will serve as a backdrop to my greatest adventure to date. We made it because if there's one place on Earth to find the world's largest predatory shark, this is it. What's cool about Guadalupe is it's kind of like the sister to the Farallon Islands that we filmed at before. Unfortunately, we didn't see any sharks in the Farallons, but down here, the sharks come in because of the seals. They have three different species of pinniped here in Guadalupe. They've got their endemic fur seal population, they've got California sea lions, and then of course they have northern elephant seals, all of which are on the menu for the great white shark. And the place we are at right now is known as the kill zone. This is the space between the feeding grounds where the seals need to hunt their food and the shore where they rest during the day. And as you can imagine, in that space in between is the great white shark's favorite buffet. But our goal isn't to see seals getting eaten while we're out here. Our goal is to get under the water in the realm of the great white shark so we can get the cameras up close and personal with one of the world's top marine predators. Our home in this mystical place will be none other than the Socorro Vortex of the Pelagic Fleet. This ship and its crew have been making the voyage to Guadalupe for years and have been assisting in shark research and conservation all along the way. The very first step to try to protect sharks is to get in the water with them. Once you're in the water with them, it's a completely different perspective you will get forever. So one of the biggest differences between what we tried to do in the Farallon Islands and what we're doing out here in Guadalupe is this. We actually get to use a tractant, AKA bait, to draw on the sharks close to the cages and therefore up close to the cameras. All right guys, I think it's time to get suited up because it's about to be our turn to get in the water. As I began to suit up, reality sunk in. I do need to say, this is the point where the nerves start to kick in and it's not because I'm scared, it's not out of fear, it's healthy because an activity like this is not risk-free. Even though we're with one of the best crews in the world when it comes to diving in cages with great white sharks, we still have to have our wits about us. Anything can happen. We're talking a ton plus animal that can be ferocious in a moment's notice, and they can literally rip these cages apart. In fact, one of my friends caught footage of a shark entering a shark cage, and they had to pop the top where the divers are supposed to come out to release the shark, not the diver. So 
We definitely have to keep our eyes peeled, be aware at all times, watch each other's backs when we're in the cages, because literally anything can happen. Just because there's bars in front of us, that's not any sign for complacency when you're in the water with an animal that formidable. The few steps between the deck and the shark cage created a bridge to the world of the great white. My heart began to race, but this time, the nerves I felt were more distinct. This was an adrenaline rush from the excitement of a life's dream nearing closer with each and every step. My moment had finally arrived. Here we go. As I entered the cool 65 degree water, my eyes began to adjust and I became aware of the endless blue void that lurked below me. The sunlight danced through the 12,000 feet of water surrounding the landscape of the island, and there was no bottom in sight, meaning the sharks could be anywhere and come from any direction. Looking around, scanning for our first shark, I was in awe of the clarity of the water and the abundance of fish in the area. Our main challenge at this point was getting properly positioned. The strong currents threw us around the cages like ragdolls. So to keep the camera steady and our bodies from bouncing off the walls, we fixed our feet to the railing and held tightly with our free hands. Watching from below the surface, I could see the occasional splash from above as the crew tossed bait lines into the water. Knowing full well that each attempt could be the line to draw the apex predators from below. We waited, patiently scanning the blue abyss for any shadows or signs of movement. Minutes seemed like hours, but then, without much warning, it happened. From the distance, a dark shape began to appear. It crept toward us slowly, and then suddenly, it was right in front of us. Wow, I couldn't believe my eyes. What I've been witnessing for years on Shark Week was right in front of my lens. Finally, I was in the presence of a great white shark. It thrashed toward the bait and missed, but after a quick lap around our cage, it disappeared again. As fast as the giant flashed into view, it was gone. But this was proof of victory. We were going to be seeing sharks today, and hopefully, lots of them. On average, great white sharks will have up to 300 teeth in their mouths at any given time. And these teeth are arranged in up to seven rows with the first two known as their working teeth. As you can see by our footage, their attacks are calculated and precise. The torpedo shape of their body allows the great white to accelerate up to speeds of, get this, 35 miles an hour and strike with a force of 29 Gs. So forget about the bite for a second. The impact alone is enough to kill prey all by itself. As I calmly observe the frenzy of sharks surrounding the cage, I am reminded that I am in their world. Not only am I observing them, they are observing me. Witnessing a strange visitor in a metal cage, they would come closer and closer with each pass for a better look. And locking eyes with a great white shark is something that I'll never forget as long as I live. As my time in the cage came to a close, I couldn't help but keep my camera rolling. We had seen many impressive sharks today, but I just had this feeling that something big was about to happen. When suddenly, a giant silhouette charged from straight beneath, and with its sights locked on the prize, it lunged at full kill speed. And how? I could not believe it. It's rare to see from the surface, let alone from underwater, but what we had just witnessed was a full breach. Behold, the full fury of the great white shark. Now feeling extremely happy with our footage, and after hours underwater, it was finally time to return to the safety of the boat. Woo! Oh my goodness, what an epic great white shark adventure that was. For our very first one, I don't think we could have asked for any more. The surface cages did not disappoint. We had all kinds of action. We had encounters right at the cage. We had fights at the bait. We had surface breaches. Huge thanks to the Sakura Vortex crew for helping us out and keeping us safe on today's adventure. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a second of the action ahead 
I'm Mark Vins. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next dive. It's no surprise that these sharks are referred to as great. They are truly a perfected product of evolution and largely differ from any of the previous sharks we've encountered on Blue Wilderness. Great whites are intelligent creatures, highly inquisitive by nature, and as we clearly witness today, master hunters of the deep. We'd like to give an extra special thank you to the captain and crew of the Socorro Vortex. To learn more about the ways you can visit Guadalupe or to support shark conservation, please visit their website at www.vortexliveaboard.com. And stay tuned. If you thought this episode was intense, just wait until our next dive. This time, we'll take you in great white territory in an experimental shark cage submarine. Get ready, brave crew. We're about to take you even closer to the world's most famous set of jaws. 